Hey lovely ladies, gorgeous and crazy kids. Me and Brady just got back from our early afternoon walk and wanted to respond to a question that we received from Maya on my website, KennyLovesYou.com. Maya is a long-term supporter. Thank you so much, Maya. She's been with me since 2009, 2010, since I was transitioning to natural hair. And Maya asks, as a single full-time working professional woman like myself with many hobbies, how do you balance being a pet owner? What are the struggles? Is owning a dog worth it? And what are your tips for someone in a similar stage of life making the commitment of getting a dog? If you follow me on any social media sites, you should be very familiar with my four-year-old minpin, Brandy. Um, basically, Brandy's owner passed away and her and her brother needed a home. So my coworker asked if I would take Brandy in. I was very unsure about it because although I had been considering getting a dog or a cat, I was very just, I was terrified. Um, so I took her home for one night just to see how things would go. She immediately, literally as soon as I opened the door, ran in and made herself at home and just had the most adorable personality. And I was like, she has to be mine. So that's how Brandy came to be my doggy. I love her so much. She's my best friend. And having her for the last six months has definitely taught me a lot about being a dog owner. Before I get into the video, I will say that I am actually able to take Brandy to work with me. We are going to make the adjustment to her only coming to work with me on half day. So she'll be spending a lot more time at home. But I still feel like I have some... <laughs> You want to get down? <laughs> but I still feel like I have some valuable tips that um, could be helpful for um, new dog owners and people considering um, bringing a new furry friend into their life. So first off, Maya asks if it's worth it to get a dog and really that depends on what your purpose with getting a dog is. I don't think you should necessarily get a dog to heal loneliness. I wanted companionship, but I just don't feel like you make that type of commitment just out of loneliness. If you're someone who wants genuine friendship with the animal, you want your kids to have a pet or you want to make them a part of your family. If you have any of those desires and you're going into it with the right intentions, completely you'll feel like having a dog is worth it. But if you're kind of just making a spur of the moment decision, I I don't think that you should do that with an animal. If you're someone, she is over here about to pass out after this walk. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> if you're someone who's never been a dog owner, my recommendation to you would be to Probably not get a puppy, especially if someone, you're someone who does have a busy schedule. Thankfully, because Brandy is four, even though I had to break her into a lot of things because she just didn't seem to be a very active dog. Uh, uh, she was obedient, but she didn't know like commands and things like that when I got her. Um, so she required a lot of training, but she was past that phase of being housebroken um, and chewing stuff all over the house and tearing stuff up and getting into things and in general the younger the dog i just feel like the more attention they're gonna need so if your schedule doesn't allow extra time for that attention or if you don't have someone who lives with you my recommendation just wouldn't be to get a dog that's super young i do think that you should start looking into breeds maybe while you're browsing in the pet store and you see a dog you like look into um things that they do well with that they don't do well with are they good with people are they good with little kids if you do have small children or something like that um how how's their level of anxiety i had no idea that brandy was gonna have so much separation anxiety and i wish i would have at least been prepared for that before i got her because it's taken six months just to get her to the point where she's not yelping and whining every single time i leave and really stressing out consider their energy level if you are going to be gone a lot don't get a dog that's super hyperactive or is gonna get in stuff or gets very bored easily or just needs a lot of stimulation you're gonna want a dog that's very laid back one of the biggest perks of having brandy is that she is so low maintenance she likes to play she loves going on walks she's a very active dog since i've kind of trained her to be more active but 
when I'm at work, people think I'm just playing with her and stuff. No, she, Brandy sleeps the entire time <laughs> that I work. Outside of going potty, outside of me taking a quick break from paperwork and stuff, Brandy sleeps in her bed the entire day. <laughs> now, just because Brandy already spends a lot of time during the day with me, that doesn't mean I don't have to make additional time for quality time because the time that she's at work with me or running errands or whatever, that's not true quality time. My time off of work is usually dedicated to doing productive things and errands and stuff like that. It's very difficult to do that now and I just can't be as active as I used to be. So I've honestly just learned how to either incorporate Brandy into as many activities as possible or really just try to balance my time as wisely as possible. For example, I used to try to go to the gym four or five times a week. Well, now my compromise with that is to work out maybe two, three times at the gym every week. And then the other two times I will go for just a long extended walk with Brandy. If you're not someone who has tons of time after work, get up 30 minutes to an hour early before you have to work just so you can spend quality time with your dog. That can be just playing in the living room, playing in the house with your dog, taking them out for a 15, 20 minute walk, throwing playing toss with them, trying to train them to do new tricks, um, anything that can get their excitement up, get them happy for the day. Um, I have tried to start cooking in bulk more. That hour, 30 minutes to an hour, I would usually spend in the kitchen. I can now spend just playing and spending time with Brandy. I've also gotten back into things like reading, just calm activities that I can do at home. No, we're not playing or anything, but sometimes your animal just wants to be near you. It's not like you constantly have to be stimulating them. If you like to read or write or paint or just listen to some music, even if you like to play video games, just let your dog sit with you while you do that and that can be very helpful for them. To be honest, it's benefited me to have Brandy because it has required me to slow down a lot to probably prioritize more and to stop spending as much money. A few tips I can give to you all is don't just go out and buy tons of random dog stuff. I wish I wouldn't have gone and out of the excitement of having a dog or out of the confusion of not knowing what the heck to do with the dog, I just got a lot of unnecessary stuff. I got her like stair steps to get on the bed. I ended up getting her a whole bunch of toys and Brandy doesn't mess with toys. She likes cat toys, but those are basically all just like pieces of yarn with little cotton balls and stuff on the end. I'm like, I literally could have made this out of something out of the trash can. Like <laughs> the only thing that was a really good investment for her was the bed that I got for her and the blankets. But honestly, she probably could have done without a bed and just got a whole bunch of throws because seriously, I have like 20 throws in my apartment and every single one Brandy believes is hers. So until you start figuring out your dog's personality, don't you start going and start getting random stuff. Another tip is before getting a dog, make sure you are prepared to live a more active life. Make sure you are ready to have earlier mornings and make sure you're ready to just have a positive attitude. You know, Brandy, it's 7.30 on a Sunday morning and as much as I wanna sleep in, she has to get up, she has to potty and she's super excited to see me. So when she's up there slapping my face, I don't yell at her, I don't kick her, I don't do whatever. I get up, I smile, I say hey to her, I throw on some raggedy clothes and we go for a 30 minute walk. Why? Because she needs that. And I'm honestly very appreciative for Brandy for that reason because she makes my days longer because now she requires me to get up earlier and she honestly makes my mornings a bit easier just because she is so happy to see me in the morning it's like how can you be grumpy waking up to an animal that's just wanting to love on you I think one of the most powerful things you can do straight from the get-go with your pet is to really establish boundaries and um, a level of respect I think a lot of people think they have to just start kicking and beating animals to get them to be obedient but if your animal knows that you're calling the shots and that you're the one that needs to be respected and um, things are going your way you don't necessarily have to do all that like I don't hit Brandy I don't have to do anything really I don't have to be mean to her the most I have to do is say Brandy like in that mom voice that all of us have but she doesn't require all of that because at the end of the day no matter what she wants to get into or what she wants to do, she respects me. And I guess my last tip is to make sure you are able to handle a pet 
um, financially, which is obvious. You need to be able to afford food and their combs and brushes and, and flea powder and all of that stuff. But I know two other people who have taken in dogs and both have had situations where they've had to take them to the doctor and have had super high medical bills and things like that. Um, you're going to want to have some type of fund or something in case anything happens with your animal just like you would for yourself. There's everything from heartworm to fleas and ticks to bad dental situations. I mean, there are a lot of things that can go wrong with animal care. So you just have to be ready for those spur of the moment costs that you didn't necessarily expect in the first place. This video was a bit longer than I expected, but I think I covered everything that I need to share to someone who's considering getting a pet who lives a similar lifestyle to me. Taking Brandy in was the best decision I ever could have made. It's one of the best decisions I've made in my life because she just has taught me so much and helped me develop so much patience and just made me a happier and more organized person and really made me get my priorities together so I don't know what I would do without her. Alright and with that said we're gonna see you lovely ladies, gorgeous chips, and crazy kids later. Candy loves ya! <laughs>